the very fact that it feels it needs an explanation is, is quite astonishing in the 21st century. Women make up 50% of the population of the world, They're 50, slightly over 50% of our population here in the United Kingdom. Um, and if every citizen isn't allowed to fully participate in all aspects of society, whether they be political, uh, public life, economic uh, life, uh, whatever it is, then we all lose out. Um, I, thinking about uh, something I really like is that my friend Christine Lagarde, who of course herself is a huge example of a woman who um, has risen uh, to the highest levels, including of course uh, being head of the in International Monetary Fund and now of course uh, her job in Europe. But she once said, um, you know, not utilizing women, particularly in the economy, is rather like flying an aeroplane and using only one of the two engines. Of course, you will get to your destination in the end, but you could do it so much better if you utilized both engines. Um, so that's, uh, to my mind, uh, common sense. And we are seeing progress. I've mentioned Christine herself. Of course, she was succeeded by Christiana Georgieva, who is also a woman. And, and, and just the other day, the World Trade Organization appointed its first female and African uh, director, Ngozi okonjo Awila, who herself, of course, has had a, a great career in public life at the World Bank and also as finance minister in uh, Nigeria. Uh, having said that, of course, uh, that they are notable because they are exceptions to the rule. Um, we have women as heads of state or government at the moment in only 21 countries. 119 countries have never had a woman leader. And uh, the current rate, UN Women calculates that parity in the highest levels of power will not be reached for another 130 years, which to my mind is 129 too late. First of all, of course, one of the sustainable development goals uh, looks at uh, obviously the discrimination against uh, women and other uh, groups. Um, and uh, so it itself, it is part of the, the issue, but Time and time again, we have had surveys. My, again, my own foundation did a survey that found that if women entrepreneurs were able to participate equally in the world economy, $5 trillion uh, would be added to global GDP. That would certainly help achieve some of the um, uh, d d sustainable development goals, as would the, the reports from McKinsey, which were looking at women, not just as entrepreneurs, but women generally participating in the economy, which showed a range from 12 trillion to even 27 trillion, I think it, it was, um, that would be contributed depending how you looked uh, at the area. Um, so, uh, you know, I go back to what I say, it doesn't make sense to fly the plane on one engine. Yes, that's definitely very The other thing I think we need to, to think about, about women and their contribution, is the fact uh, of the, the way that, uh, you know, if you empower a woman, uh, it tends to have a much more generational impact uh, because of, of their role as caregivers, as, as, as um, mothers, as the trainers, as the, the, the teachers of, of young children. It, it has a much wider impact because of the crucial and pivotal role uh, that uh, females do play. A little bit about Article 4.1 of CEDAW, which is about temporary special measures. The idea of that is to actually speed up the achievement of women's equality, substantive equality with men, and to enable structural and cultural changes that are necessary to correct past injustices um, to be put in place. I mean, I mentioned an example of that, when I talked about the all women shortlist, for example, um, a good example of that is allowing uh, quotas and other um, mechanisms to ensure that the historic underrepresentation of women 
well, historic and actual underrepresentation of women in public life can be uh, corrected. And Sido makes it absolutely clear that this is not, as uh, some people cry, you know, discrimination against men. It's actually a leveling up of the playing field so that actually women can participate equally with men because at the moment they're not able to participate equally because of uh, the historic discrimination that has held them back. And it can be a wide range of things, legislative, executive, administrative, policies, practices, whether it's allocating resources, always important, because if you have action plans and no money behind them, it doesn't always work. Uh, public awareness programs, I've mentioned quotas, uh, and also ensuring that scrutiny of qualifications to ensure that they're based on objective and not subjective, objective grounds, not subjective assumptions. And, um, you know, CEDAW also allows states to participate with that, even when they meet with uh, hostility. Um, and I think it is quite telling that often the first attack on any measures to help level up the playing field for women is often the phrase political correctness. And, and people who have no other arguments based on fairness will often use political correctness as a shield to hide behind, to simply um, try and undermine the legitimacy of trying to redress historic wrongs. 